Hey there, good afternoon and welcome back to our GovCon Hacks channel. It was brought to my attention by some folks in the comments that there have been some changes that were made to the submission of your entity administrator letter to the Federal Service Desk. So I thought I would go ahead and update the video so that everyone is sure to follow the uh, current instructions for submitting the entity administrator letter. So you might have realized over the last couple of years, maybe CM revoked entity administrator privileges. Maybe you had done this already in the past once or twice, but um, you need to do it again for whatever reason. So we're gonna go through that today and how you're gonna submit this letter, how to prepare it, all of that good stuff. So what you see on my screen here is actually not SAM.gov, but it's FSD.gov, which stands for the Federal Service Desk. And the instructions in order to prepare our letter do live in here. Now, it would be really easy just to provide you a link to where the instructions live, but we found that when the instructions are updated or the templates are updated, that they don't necessarily do a good job of updating that same page. Sometimes they create a separate page. So if this is uh, something that is a task on your plate, these are the steps that you're gonna follow from start to finish. In the search bar, you're gonna type in entity admin. That's gonna bring up a list of articles and what we are looking for is how can I become the administrator for my non-federal uh, entity registration? Now, today's date is February 20th, 2025. This was updated about a month ago. So that goes to show you how often uh, this is updated. Always grab the most recent one. Now, what we're looking at on this screen initially is the instructions. So you have to be an employee, officer, or board member of an entity to request to become the entity administrator. Third parties are not permitted to be the entity administrator. If you utilize a third party for your CM compliance, the proper way would be to be the administrator yourself and then assign that third party a data entry role. So you, as the business owner, want to retain the access to your SAM and be able to assign roles or revoke roles as needed. So before submitting your EAAL, another acronym for you, uh, check with your organization to see if you already have an administrator. So this is assuming that you're not the owner of the company, right? Sometimes the former administrator has moved on and they're no longer with the company. Sometimes, um, you know, the email address might be dead. Maybe they used a personal email instead of the business email. So there's a lot of reasons why one would need to execute this process to appoint somebody else to be over the registration. All right, we're going to go down to step one, choose the letter template that you need. So notice there are three options here for a single entity. If you only have one SAM registered business, this is the template that you'll need. Template two is for multiple entities. So we're going to break open this first template just to show you. And template three obviously is for international. But we're just going to show you exactly what this looks like. And it opened a new screen. So let me go ahead and reshare this with you. We're going to stop screen sharing there and we're going to present now this new window. Here's the single entity administrator template and my share is going a little bit crazy there. Oops, try that one more time. Sorry guys, share screen. Try a window this time, maybe that'll do better. There we go. Okay, so your single entity template, it's giving you a little background here. This, uh, these are the instructions. You must complete the template to fill in the blanks. Print the letter on your entity's letterhead. If you don't have a letterhead, enter your entity's legal name and business, I'm sorry, your legal business name and physical address at the top of the letter before printing it. Now, even if you have a letterhead, sometimes I've seen instances where 
instead of the business name, you just have your logo. That is a no bueno. You do need to actually print out the business name. So even if you have an existing letterhead template, be sure that it meets the requirements before just copying and pasting. Um, sometimes I just go ahead and ditch my formal letterhead and I'll just put my name and um, my name and address at the top and call it a day. All right. Now, you do have to sign the completed letter in the presence of a notary. So you can imagine that if you make a silly mistake and you have to get it re-notarized, how that might incur extra fees that you don't necessarily need to incur. And once it is notarized, we're going to follow the instructions that I'll show you here to actually submit it to FSD. Here's the template itself, right? So from here, you're just going to copy. Copy all of this, and you're gonna paste that on your new letterhead, and then you're gonna fill it out. The areas that are most commonly um, overlooked are here, sometimes folks forget to put their title. So this is your name and your title of he or she who is signing the letter. Your UEI will go here, your legal business name and your physical address. All of this must match, remember, what is on your letterhead, I, what IRS has on file, what Secretary of State has on file. And then here is where we're appointing the entity administrator contact information. So if you're a business owner and you're appointing someone on your staff, you're going to fill the letter out. This is going to be your name and your title. So Ashley Dual CEO. And then I might want to appoint someone else. This is where you'll put in their information. If you are appointing yourself, then your information will go here. Next is the attestation. Don't touch anything here. If there's a misspelling, leave it alone. That's definitely not our problem. Respectfully, this is where you're going to sign. And then notice there are additional entries. Your name goes first. Your title goes second. Notice down here, it's not on the same line as it was above. And your email, your legal business name, and your entity address again. At that point, you can take it maybe to an online notary, um, but the notary should be in your state. Um, have them stamp and sign, and you'll take that completed document now we're going to go back to the Federal Service Desk. So let me go ahead and reshare that other screen there. And I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to submit this to the Federal Service Desk. So first thing we're going to have to do is sign in on the upper right side. Um, with our login.gov account. This is the same that we use for Sam. All right. Now that I'm all signed in, you'll see that I have some previous in, uh, incidents up there. But the Create Incident button is all the way down at the bottom, hidden. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the system name as Sam, the System for Award Management. Our issue type, whoops, our issue type is going to be role management. Issue two, entity administrator appointment letter. And issue three is gonna be NA. We're gonna put our UEI here, the subject. All right, now I'm going to skip these articles. Entities covered by this letter. So if you have a single entity letter template prepared, mark single. If you have multiple, mark multiple. Um, entity EUI, uh, UBI number, that looks like a duplicate, so you have to enter that twice. Legal business name. 
entity physical address, be sure there are no typos in these, um, in these fields because those are going to match up against what you have on your letter and what's on your SAM profile. So entity administrator full name, phone number, email, and the administration preference. So self-administration um, is when you are somebody within your organization. And third-party agent designation is actually not supposed to even be a thing anymore, believe it or not. So I'm not sure why that option is there. However, this is just your checkbox saying that you have signed it, it has been notarized, and typically it's going to be a PDF file once you receive it back from the notary. You're just going to attach that baby right here. That's all you're going to do. And submit it. Once you hit submit, and the submit button is all the way up at the top, by the way. Once you hit that submit button, what's going to happen is you're going to receive an email letting you know that an incident has been created and opened on your behalf. You'll typically receive a second email after about two or three days once they've executed. You can always go back up to the My Incidents area and check on the, um, on the status of your incident. And FSD does have a live chat feature if you do have questions. However, the entity administrator process is very much through this form. They'll review your form. If there's something wrong with your entity administrator letter template, they will send it back. You will have to make those corrections. You will have to re-notarize and you'll have to resubmit. So if you have any questions, please drop them down below in the comments. I do check them every single day to help you guys overcome your hurdles. If you need help or a walkthrough on this, um, compliance is services that we provide at Dole Dev. However, you can also get free help from your local Apex Accelerator. SAM registrations are free to do on your own, guys. So don't let anyone jump in your email and scare you um, to make you think that you have to pay. This is a free process, much like submitting your income taxes at the end of the year. So if you have any questions, please do let me know if you have any trouble and keep me apprised. If something's changed in this video and it's different than what you're seeing, let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to create an updated video for you. Thanks, everybody. Happy contracting and have a great rest of your day.